So as we move through the calendar year, we are presented with many different opportunities uh, on the horse racing calendar. Each month has little highlights and things that you should pay particular attention to. As I record this video, we are in May, and as a consequence, we have the Chester May meeting. And Chester is a unique race course, and therefore that produces unique opportunities because of that. So in this video, what I'm going to do is we're going to have a look at this specific meeting and present some clear-cut opportunities to you, whether you're betting or trading. So you've probably heard the phrase in racing, horses for courses, and it's colloquially used as well. But more specifically in horse racing, what this is basically saying is if a horse has a one over course and distance, then that is a good thing. It's more likely to be able to win over course and distance again. And that is because all of the courses in the UK are generally a little bit different. Some are more different than others, some are similar to each other, uh, but it is quite amazing. And this is one of the things that's fascinating me with horse racing, just how different all of the race courses are. Um, and that brings into play many different factors. When we zoom out and have a look at Chester race course, what you will actually notice is it's nearly a circle. It's an oval. It's not technically a circle, but um, it's very, very nearly a circle. And the interesting thing about that is it means that when the horses are running, they're on the turn all the way through the race or pretty much through an entire race at Chester. And the impact that that has is a very strong draw bias. And when we look at draw bias, what we're talking about is if we looked at an athletics track, then you actually see a staggered start. And that is because people on the inside will actually run shorter than people on the outside. So they have to even it out. But that doesn't happen on a race course. And as a consequence, when you look at a course like Chester, you will notice uh, that there is a very strong draw bias. And that is simply down to the fact that the horse that is drawn low, i.e. near the rails, has to run much less distance than a horse that is drawn high. And any horse that wants to win from a high draw will have to get over to the rails and get in front to basically be able to stand any chance of winning. When you look at other courses like Beverly, Beverly has a strong draw bias as well. But when you look, uh, for example, at Royal Ascot and you look at the straight mile there, there is no draw bias. It's only differing ground across the course that could perhaps make a bit of a bias there. And then when you go to a race course like Windsor, then you will actually see that it is a figure of eight. So again, very different sort of running styles. But fundamentally speaking, when we look at Chester race course, it is absolutely famous for its strong draw bias. So there's something interesting that happens at Chester each year that I keep an eye out for. And when we're looking at betting um, markets from a, uh, when you have a course with a strong uh, draw bias, you're obviously going to have to take that into account because you have two equally rated horses, but one's got a decent draw and the other one hasn't. That's necessarily going to affect the price and how you think that should be discounted into the market and whether you're getting value or not, basically. And as you keep an eye on results as they come through on the day, you'll be able to see whether the draw bias is stronger or weaker than normal based upon ground conditions. So that can throw up some decent betting opportunities. But it can also throw up some decent trading opportunities as well, because I've often talked in the past about jockey trainer gambles. If a jockey or a trainer win a series of races, or preferably both, then that will set the next market on fire when um, that winner comes in, or when those winners come in, I should say appropriately. But the interesting thing at Chester and courses that have a strong draw bias is people will be looking at the winners from the previous races and seeing which stalls they came out of. Because if there is a strong bias on that particular day and horses keep winning from low drawn um, stalls or, or so on, then that will set the market on fire as well. So keep an eye out for that because when you're at a race course like Chester, that comes into the mix, whereas it wouldn't necessarily come into the mix at other race courses. So not only could it be the jockey or the trainer has a, a couple of decent winners and that uh, get, sets off a bit of backing later in the card. But if, if they're all drawn in a low draw or you get horses that are in a low draw, then that will have an impact uh, on what happens in those later races as well. So that's something I'm always looking out for at Chester. But the interesting thing is um, when we look at in-play markets, there's also something that you need to keep an eye on. So we've had a quick look at how a strong draw bias can affect the betting markets, but also how if you're trading pre-off on Betfair, uh, you can get some insight as to what could happen in a race a little bit further down the card based upon the winners of the uh, previous races. But the interesting thing about a uh, race course that has a strong draw bias is how it affects the in-play market. Because have a think about it, you tend to describe horses as being held up or front run. 
and you know there's mixtures of that in between. But imagine that you're a front runner and you have a wide draw um, at a course with a, a strong uh, draw bias. You're going to have to somehow get that horse across the course and in front of those runners to get the horse to run to its true capability. And if you can't achieve that, you're going to get stuck in mid-vision or even worse, if you get off to a bad start, you'd be right at the back with a lot of ground to make up, especially over shorter distances. So really, when you look at courses that have a strong draw bias, it really does favour front runners. Um, because if they are at a lower draw, then hopefully they'll take the front, run much uh, shorter distance than some of the other horses. Um, and that is hugely beneficial. And if you're held up, um, then, you know, that's going to be a bit of a problem for you, especially if you're drawn low. You know, all of these dynamics will significantly affect the in-play market. And that little period that you get just after the race is off, when the horses are trying to settle in position, will have a significant impact on the outcome of that particular race itself. So, yeah, that's always worth looking out for. But fundamentally speaking, uh, when you have a strong draw bias, it does favour front runners, especially if they're drawn low. So if we look at the first race at Chester today, I'm looking at the At The Races website, which provides a good summary of many things to do with the race. You can see all of the information that you need here, but you can also get information about how strong the draw bias is for each individual horse. But what we're looking at here is the pace, i.e. which horses are likely to be prominent, which ones are going to be front run, uh, and so on. You can see actually, if we look at the pace on the right hand side here, that there are no horses that particularly like to be held up but we can see two prominent front runners, which is Lookout Louis and Knight on Earth. But if we look on the far left, you can actually see um, that Knight on Earth is drawn one, which is basically on the rails, uh, so is much more likely to get off to a decent start. And Lookout Louis is drawn store seven, which is quite wide, and therefore is unlikely to be able to get its favoured position in the race. So let's have a look and see what happened in this actual race. So let me explain what my screen setup is here so that you can understand each of these bits of information uh, that is available. When you have bet you can plug it into total performance data. Um, so I make extensive use of that now to understand what's going on in the actual race itself. And you can see a lot of that on the screen, uh, which I will describe in a second. But basically bottom left hand corner, you've got a feed from Sky Sports Racing. I've put this on here in a small box so you can see the difference between what Sky is showing you and what you can see uh, via total performance data. And then in the middle of the screen, we have the real time uh, tracking map, which is basically uh, getting information from the race course and telling you exactly where the horses are on the race horse uh, race course itself. And using that, you can get uh, key data, which is what you can see on the screen above. You can see things like position of leader distance and all of that. That's all coming from total performance data. And Bet Angel is displaying all of the other information, such as the odds, the name of the horses, the silks, the saddle cloth, the stall draw, all of that other information as well. And we've got the in-play trader on the top right hand screen, which is giving us a graphical representation and interface that we can click and place bets on uh, when uh, the race is actually in play, as the name suggests. Again, each of these features requires a separate video, really. And then finally, on the right hand side, we have the race pars chart, which is basically telling you how the race is likely to be run. The red line means fast and the blue line means slow. And you'll actually see the speeds being plotted over here to tell you exactly what's going on within the race as the race is underway. So, yeah, you've got tons of information here to tell you everything that's going on in each individual race. So before we go to the race live, have a look at the odds on Night on Earth. This was one of the front runners that we identified. Uh, that's going to go off at 7.6 and Lookout Louis is going to go off at 10s. So let's see what happens in the race and how that affects the odds. So the first thing you notice is that Bet Angel is ahead of the sky pictures and the market only suspends and goes in play when the sky pictures show it. But you can immediately see uh, if I pause the video now we can quickly have a look at what's going on here. But Night on Earth has taken a clear lead and you can see that um, Lookout Louis um, it didn't get the near side rail and therefore the price has drifted a little bit. But yeah, you can see at the very start of the race there, the impact that taking the lead has had on this particular front runner. And the fact that Lookout Louis couldn't uh, match that means that its odds have drifted as the leader has actually contracted in price. But what we'll do is we'll revisit the race as we uh, get a little bit further on as well, so that you can understand another key characteristic uh, within this particular race. 
So if we look a little bit further along in the race, you can see that Night on Earth's price has gone back to where it was at the start, and you're wondering why that is the case. Well, if you look at the race pass chart, you can actually see uh, that they've been running at the top end of expected pace, right? You know, it's a very fast pace for this particular level of race. So as a consequence, um, if you're a front runner, you're using up a lot of energy immediately, um, and it's likely if you go off at this sort of pace, then the pace will slow dramatically in the final part of the race. When is that pace going to slow down? Well, we can see it on the race pass chart. We can see that any second now, we're going to go into the slowest part of the race. And that's when people will begin to discount that effect from the pictures that they can see. And the prices will start to move from there. So in fact, when you're looking at a race, you've got to look at it at three different stages. You've got to look at the start of the race, the middle, and obviously the end. But using the race pass chart, you can actually anticipate when the key points are going to arrive within the race. But also, if you're looking at a front runner and it's gone off at a hefty pace, then it's very likely that that pace will decline as we go later on within the race. So there you have it. If you want to bet effectively or trade effectively on a race, then understanding the layout of the course is absolutely essential. And the great thing is there is lots of information that will allow you to do that. If you use Bing or Google Maps, you can look at the topography of the course, understand the layout and how that race is going to be run. But better than that, you can visit sites like At The Races that will uh, tell you exactly what the draw bias is and the likely pace within the race. And when you actually start uh, the race itself, you've got all this glorious information available for you within BetAngel that would tell you exactly what's going on within the race. But better than that, you can actually use the race paths to understand how the race is likely to be run and how the race is unfolding at that exact moment in time and where those key parts of the course are. So yeah, if you put all of that information together, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to bet or trade profitably on horse racing.